Let's rise and shout. On a Monday, it's time for What's Trending. The Mark Pope era is officially over in Provo. Pope headed to Kentucky. So anytime you lose a coach, there's a danger that some players may want to look at uh, other opportunities. What's Trending, sponsored by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Let's just briefly recap what the heck happened in the last three days and then get into the meat of this and more importantly what the heck BYU is going to do next since Friday of course Mark Pope becomes official at the University of Kentucky he's there to hang banners don't know if you heard Jason. 20,000 were in attendance he's there to, to hang it. banners okay Dallin Hall enters the transfer portal from BYU shortly thereafter BYU's most important player in the words of his former head coach Mark Pope then Ali Khalifa hops in the portal on Friday BYU fans, I had one specific friend text me and say, okay, I understand Down and Ali, just not Richie. Just please not Richie. Richie is my spirit animal. I can't <laughs> handle it. Richie Saunders hops into the portal on Sunday. Brutal, okay? Now, this is, again, this is, I know it feels like the Titanic. There is still room for these guys to come back. So, Jason, initially, as you look at the timeline of Pope to Kentucky and those three players entering the transfer portal, what is your reaction to all of this madness? Not surprised, but hoping that it wasn't going to happen. <sighs> and I, and I, I put this out on social media almost once we realized, while it wasn't official that Pope was going, yeah. that it was going that direction, sure. to me, I, I, I tweeted out that, BYU is going to make a good hire. Yes, they have enough yes. good candidates that they're going to get a good person in to take over the reins of this program. To me, the story was always going to be who stays, who goes, what the roster sure. looks like. Sure. And so you knew in the back of your mind that when change – look, there was a chance there was going to be some people leaving even if Mark Pope stayed. Not because – of we heard anything specifically or not, but that's just the nature of yes. college athletics right now. 100%. So you couldn't even guarantee everyone was going to come back even if Mark Pope stayed. So when you have a change like that, you have to assume there's going to be some sort of shakeup from a roster standpoint. It's never, it's never an easy thing, one, to lose your head coach, but certainly when you, use, you lose potentially the likes of I think BYU fans would, would say, along with Jackson Robinson, these are three of the four most important pieces of last year's BYU 100%. basketball team. Can't, can't agree more. Because of the roles that they played. Dallin Hall, I know, like and sometimes in clutch moments, fans really criticized him because it didn't go. But more often than not, he got people in the right place at the right time. He was integral to getting the BYU machine going. He was the engine. Ali was like this magical glue guy. And to lose him with his assist to turnover ratio and all the things he opened up in that offense, that hurts. But my gosh, the Energizer Bunny. Like that was like <laughs> that one hit me to my soul. It felt like the final <laughs> blow almost, right? Where it's like, not Richie. Anybody but Richie. Again, there's there's still room. Yes. For these guys, and I say these guys potentially multiple to come back to BYU. But, Jason, naturally, it all depends on who BYU hires. Yep. That's, that is the number one thing. All of this, I, I had a lot of people reach out over the, like, just, just BYU fans. Like, well, we're, we're seeing all these, these other schools getting their commitments and people yeah. are transferring. Like, when are we going to? Well, you're not going to hear any of this until BYU gets a head coach. <sighs> Nobody's going to commit to a program if they don't know who's going to be running it. And everybody wants it right now. Yes. This is BYU. Okay, they, they take their time, due diligence. But that's not saying they can't do it on an expedited time timeline for BYU. And it doesn't paradise. mean that things aren't happening Correct. now. Correct. And I believe there People are things People think that because happening. there's no news means nothing's happening, and that's not the case. No, there are things happening. I can tell you in confidence there are things happening. Interviews are taking place, and they did – on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and now into Monday. Those things are happening for sure. What is the ideal scenario for BYU to keep these three critical players, or at least one, maybe two of them, when it comes to the head coaching hire? Jason, I can't help but want to revert to something that we saw from BYU football, and that is, and you've gone, we've gone through the candidates. Okay, let's recap briefly, yeah. shall we? Yeah. Like The guys that are out there, 
Mark Madsen is done. Yep. He he doubled down. He's at Cal. Yep. Like he, even though he's a candidate, it's not happening. That, that one that one is not happening. He is staying at Cal. They want to build something there. He's only one year into that contract. Clearly, he's not going to be the guy for BYU. After that, Chris Burgess is a name that has floated to the top of the list. And his lineage, playing for Mike Shashesky and playing at Utah, and then being a member of Mark Pope's staff. Yep. It, it feels like he's a favorite, if not the favorite. Correct. And then Barrett Peary is a guy that had time at Portland State and knows the area and is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he spent time in the Big 12 as an assistant at Texas Tech when they went to the national championship game. He's been around the Big 12. After that, assistant coaches in the NBA, Jason, I, I don't know. Quincy Lewis is a name that's popped up, former BYU basketball assistant under Dave Rose. He's done great things at the high school level. To me, whatever ha it, it, it is, if you're going to hire a first-time head coach, I feel like you need an associate head coach, just like they did with Kalani when they brought in Ed Lamb as a former head coach to be the associate head coach, and Jay Hill is the associate head coach for Kalani now. I like that system. I don't know what it's going to be, what combo of that it would be, but I feel like that's how BYU, realistically speaking, best-case scenario, could bring one or multiple of these guys back from the portal. Yeah, and that's what all of these other moves, whether it's guys leaving, whether it's guys yes. coming back, people from outside the program coming in, none of that stuff can be solidified until the head coaching hire is made. And we're talking about getting everybody up to speed. You know, there, there may not be, pe there may be people that, that aren't up to speed on where some of these guys are at least saying yeah. they're considering. Yeah, so sure. with a guy like Ali Khalifa, this came out over the weekend from, uh, from Joe Tipton, uh, and, and he said that, that Ali Khalifa's finalists are Kentucky, Louisville, and then a return to BYU. So it's good to see that a return to BYU is still in the mix. You're telling me there's a chance. By the way, Kentucky, Louisville, BYU. Mm. Not bad, right? Okay. Not bad. Okay. Now, earlier today, we had a report come out from Travis uh, Branham, and he mentioned Dallin Hall. And he said that, uh, that quote, BYU four-star transfer Dallin Hall currently considering the following schools. The source tells 24-7 Sports Portal, Creighton, Clemson, Cincinnati, Florida, Washington, Utah, Utah State, <laughs> and then a return to BYU. So those are the schools, according to Travis Branham, that Dallin Hall, the common denominator between the two, BYU still in the mix. Now, we've not seen anything from Richie in terms of what schools have contacted no, him. We heard, we saw his statement, though, which yes. clearly said there's so much uncertainty yes. and unknown. But you go, but BYU being in the mix, you assume, is on the table. Yes. So all yes. three guys that are in the transfer portal, I'll ask you, and you kind of touched on this a minute ago, how many of the three that are currently in the portal, how many do you expect to be back? Ooh. Again, it depends yeah. on who BYU hires as their next head coach. Let's just throw out a hypothetical. Let's say that it is Chris Burgess as the head coach. And we'll throw out the associate head coach narrative for the moment and just focus on Chris Burgess. If Burge is the guy, one, I feel like it would certainly help calm some nerves from specifically Dallin Hall and Richie Saunders because they know Chris. He was involved yes. in the recruitment of those players with Mark Pope. I know Burge has been gone for a couple of years, but he, come on. He, he was here when those guys... Those relationships were already built. ...wanted to choose BYU and ultimately chose BYU. So if we're singling in on a number, I would say if he's the guy, at least one of the three comes back to BYU. At least one. See, I, I think if Burgess is the hire here, if that's ultimately what BYU chooses to do and they hire Chris Burgess... I think you're getting both back. Really? I think okay. you're getting. I think. I think I'm it's hopeful. very realistic that you could get Richie and Dallin back. I'm hopeful. And by the way, I know a lot of people are fed up with the. Oh, I hate the state of college athletics and these players. They're just they only they only care about themselves. Think about it. If it were your son or yeah. your brother or your family member, think about your were, own if job. It were you. Yes. Hey, if you are told hey, we don't know what your job's going to look like in the immediate future and who your boss is going to be. Um, so, but, but come back. Don't go anywhere else. And you have all these other suitors that are like, hey, we have a coach in place. We have these things. Dallin and Richie and Ali did 
what they had to do to protect yes. themselves. And we need to get past no, the... I'm not mad at yes. them at all. Yeah. Like I, to I said it on Friday. I 100% understand why they have to do this. We need to get past the college sports aren't the same narrative. They're not the same. And that genie can't be put back in the bottle. No, it was released years so, ago. So that those days are gone. Yes. And as much as we want to romanticize what used to be, that's just what it is, what it used to be. That's not how it is now. For sure. Okay, so if Bird just comes back, you think there's a great chance to get both. I think, yes, I would say that, it, that there's a good chance you could get two of those three. Now, Kalipa has no connection whatsoever to Chris Bird. He is a Mark Pope guy. Yes, at 100%, he's a Mark Pope guy. I, I firmly... But he did he, love BYU. He yes, did love his he, experience look, at BYU. I interviewed Ali Kalipa yes. last week. For, for, a, for an upcoming yeah. Deep Blue podcast episode. I know he loves BYU. We talked about it. So it, it's, it's sad that, that, you know, that he's in this situation. But again, everybody's got to do what they've got to do. But yeah, if, if Burgess is the higher, I think there's a good chance that you could get both two of those three back, being Richie and Dallin. Okay. I, I would love that scenario. I guess just... I'm, I'm trying to throw on some realism goggles or over the say, blue goggles. You, you don't want to be, you sure. don't be disappointed. Yes. <laughs> Trust yes. me, Managing. that's how my entire fandom works. <laughs> it's just, just preparing for the worst. Managing expectations. <gasps> Guess what else is in player? NIL, spe specifically for a guy like Dallin Hall. Like, Dallin deserves more, and they're probably, I'm sure, the Royal Blue Collective is working to offer him more, but some of these other programs are going to come in with big numbers. That is another factor. And frankly, if you get a big number from a big time program with a head coach that wants you and is solidified, it, I, it, it's going to be tough to say no. But if Burgess is hired and maybe, maybe is the associate head coach thing goes along with like Nick Robinson. What if Nick Robinson is still on the staff or you're able to bring in a couple of these guys off of your want list, yeah. then you really, really amp up, the opportunity and chance to bring back both guys. I I am thinking if Burgess is the guy, at least one hopeful like you that two could do the trick or would, would or sorry these coaches would bring back two and that certainly would help BYU. Oh my gosh! If you can, when we're on the other side of this, okay. So this is obviously hypothetical. The hire is made. Whoever the hire is, if you can get to the other side of that. And you can keep at least one of the three that are in the portal now, plus keep your recruits that you have now. Colin Chandler, by the way, two Burgess. Of the, say two of the three. If you can come out on the other side with that, mm. you are in great yeah, shape yeah, based off of what it could have looked like. Yeah. <laughs> the other side of that is losing all three. <laughs> losing everybody. And then losing a big recruit in yes. Chandler. I, I believe that Chris Burgess is is the front runner. I, I think that he will be the guy. Don't know for sure. And that's speculatory on my part. But I believe that he will be the guy. And I think that's a great move because then, yes, the Colin Chandler situation also is a scenario where Chris Burgess played heavily into recruiting Colin to BYU. Yeah. And he's coming off of a mission. I don't know, Jason. This is These are interesting times. Like, everyone's been saying, wow, your job is really crazy right now. And I'm like, we love this. As much as we hate losing coaches, we do love a coaching search and everything that comes <laughs> do along. Do we really with it. love it? <laughs> do we? Look, there's, let me tell you. So now, now granted, I, I realize that not everybody that's tuning yeah. into this show, whether they're watching it or listening to it, is local, meaning in the state of Utah. But there's quite a bit that could be happening this week in the landscape of sports. Yes. BYU could be getting, well, we expect we'll be getting a new coach I'd, this week. I'd be shocked if it's not done by at latest Friday. Yeah, so getting a new basketball coach to lead BYU into the second season of the Big 12, and the NHL is coming wow. by the end of the week into this local market. Ice, ice, this is baby. a big, big week. Let's